Garviolids are some of the most peculiar yet enchanting crocodilians alive today. Though they do not hold the notoriety of the Nile crocodile or the fame of the alligator, these animals are still some of the most unique alive today. Garviolidae belongs to one of the three superfamilies of crocodilians, that being Garvialoidae. This superfamily evolved around 70 million years ago, with modern gharials and false gharials diverging from one another around 38 million years ago during the Eocene period. Now there are a lot of subspecies, a lot, stretching from Asia to Europe, they're basically everywhere. In this video we will be covering the extant subfamilies of Garvialidae. These include Garvialinae and Tomistominae, with the two living species of these families being the Garial, Garvialis ganchiticus, and the false Garial, Tomistoma schlegi. Perhaps in a future video we will go into animals such as Hyanosuchus, but for now, we will be keeping it to animals alive today, since this superfamily is so diverse. The Garial or Garveal derives from the name Gara, which means pot. It is named after the animal's bulbous nose, which I guess kind of resembles a pot shape. The name Garial itself means fish-eating crocodile. Garveal is derived from the Hindi word Garial, which means crocodile. Its scientific name is Garvialis ganjeticus, roughly meaning fish-eating crocodile of the Ganges. The garial anatomy specialises them for water, with their webbed feet supporting locomotion in the depths. Their legs are extremely weak, with these animals not being able to high walk, so instead they belly slide along the ground, though they rarely come onto the ground only to bask in the sun or lay their eggs, with it never really leaving the beaches and banks to venture onto higher ground where you would probably find a mugger crocodile. Over the millions of years of evolution, the gharial has slowly developed a narrower and narrower snout with interlocking teeth. Well adapted for strong waters, it can swallow its fish prey whole, or tear it apart into smaller pieces. In order to combat the digestive issues with constantly being in the water, these animals swallow gastroliths in order to aid with digestion and help with buoyancy. Many of us see the gharial as an exclusive fish eater, but turtle and crustacean remains have been found in the animal's stomach. These animals have multiple feeding methods in the wild. Number one, they idle in the water, mostly submerged, staying still until prey passes by. Number two, in groups, these animals will confine their prey, showing a unique pack-like behavior only really seen in that of Cuban crocodile. They will snap at the fish until eventually the animal loses energy. This is helped by their nocturnal nature, since the waters are calmer and the fish are more vulnerable. Thirdly, similarly to messy stops, these animals have sensory cells on their snout. This allows them to whip their heads back and forward until they zero in on a single prey item. One of the most disturbing behavioural traits these crocodilians exhibit is the consumption of human bodies that are put afloat along the Ganges River, with even human jewellery being found in their stomach, though they do not actively hunt humans and pose almost no threat. Sexual dimorphism occurs first in size, with females only growing from 2.6 to 4.5 meters in length, and males growing from 3 to 6 meters. Additionally, as the male ages, a pot-like bulbous bump will evolve on the animal's nasal bone, which resembles a gara pot. It enables the gharial to voice a hissing sound that can be heard from 75 meters away. When it comes to sexual behaviors, the gara is used as a sound resonator when bubbling water in mating displays. Above water jaw snapping is also used. Their bulbous nose also rizzes females. <laughs> I can't believe I'm gonna have to read this. Their bulbous nose also rizzes females by keeping them stimulated during a mating ceremony. Mating season occurs from January to February during the dry season, though it can start as early as November, depending on the region. Nesting occurs March through to May, and the 20 to 60 eggs are laid in a hole with the female guarding it. The hatchlings are a tiny 18 centimeters in length, with the infants having a light olive color. This slowly darkens as they grow, with the juveniles and adults developing dark brown bands. The hatchlings will be excavated. The male and the female will guide the infants to the nearest water source. Young orioles will eat anything they can, consuming tadpoles, insects, small fish, and frogs. For the first few weeks, the male will protect them. 
but will usually abandon them three to seven weeks into the monsoon season. These animals are classified as critically endangered by the IUCN, with a decline of roughly 98% of their former territory since the 1930s. Action to save these crocodilians first started in 1973, with the National Parks and Wildlife Conservation Act making anyone who kills a gavial have harsh fines or years in prison. Still, it was hard to apply this law to rural areas the gharial was mostly found in. The odds of the gharial surviving into the modern day declined significantly, with constant habitat destruction leading to a decline in sand beaches and fish for the animal. This was mostly illegal and unprotected land. It reached breaking point in 1975, when the Indian Crocodile Conservation Project was introduced by the government. The impact of this organisation is extraordinary and really deserves its own video. Using breeding centres and reintroduction programmes, they can now be found in seven Indian river systems, including the Ganges and the Chambal. In 1975, there were less than 200 gharials recorded in India. Today, there are roughly 2,500 gharials in the wild, and 1,000 in breeding centres and zoos in India alone. Unfortunately, though many gharials are being reintroduced, no cooperation with the locals has been developed, so many populations have completely been eradicated via destructive farming and fishing practices, along with previously mentioned factors. In May 2023, the gharial was found to have spread back into its previous territory in Pakistan after roughly three decades of absence. Nepal has also put together its own gharial breeding program since 1978 and recently partnered with the World Wildlife Fund. Together, they have developed the Gharial Conservation Action Plan that lasted from 2018 to 2022. The main idea was to maintain and protect the population of around 200 gharials. Both projects have undeniably helped these animals massively, but some of their questionable practices and the behaviour of gharials were introduced may bring into question the long-term effects of this project. Time will tell whether the gharial of India has been saved from extinction. Now let's move on to the false gharial of South Asia. Tommy Stoma, or the false gharial as it is usually known, is a member of the subfamily Tommy Stomonae, which has 15 genera. Only the false gharial is alive today. Tommy Stoma derives from the word Tomos, meaning sharp, and Stoma, meaning mouth. The false gharial has been recorded all over South Asia, currently being recognised to live in Malaysia and Indonesia. They are extinct in Vietnam, Thailand, and potentially are still living in Java. Indonesia and Malaysia may seem like a large range, but they are certainly extinct in some regions with very fractured populations. There is no specific answer on their population with the IUCN estimating there are anywhere from 2,500 to 10,000 false gharials alive today. This animal may be able to exceed 16 feet in length. Females grow to around 4 meters, while males grow to around 5 meters. Some estimates put its maximum age of 40 to 60, while others put it at a maximum of 80 years old. It also has the longest skull of any living crocodilian. It has been compared morphologically to the Orinoco or American crocodiles due to its slender snout, yet generalist diet, eating anything from fish to monkeys to even deer, even having records of hunting cattle. If you want to learn more about the Orinoco or American crocodile, you can do so in my Crocodiles of the Americas video. Younger members of the species almost take on the niche of the gharial, being specialised exclusively for fish. The jaw thickens as they grow, eventually allowing the false gharial to adopt a more generalist diet. Unlike the gharial, this animal poses a slight threat to humans, having three confirmed kills in 2003 and 2012 respectively. Whether this was an act of desperation due to habitat loss and a lack of food, or an active attempt to consume humans is unknown. They are usually found in heavily vegetated freshwater peat swamps, lakes, and low current rivers. False gharials produce the largest eggs of any living crocodilian, measuring around 9.5 centimeters in length and 6 centimeters in width, with a weight of 155 grams. The IUCN classifies the false gharial as endangered since 2022, with their population significantly declining in the last 100 years. The main factors for their decline are similar to the gharials, 
mainly being blamed on habitat destruction through deforestation, water management, and hunting. Direct legal protection information is hard to find, usually only occurring on protected land with protected populations. This means hunting is pretty easy to do outside of legally protected reserves. The largest population of false gharials is found on the Danal Santarum National Park in Indonesia, yet the population is estimated to decline by 25% according to Artis, a zoo which is committed to preserving a viable population in Indonesia. Hopefully in the future, we will see a less fragmented and more stable population of false gharials, with more work with locals and more laws to protect these beautiful crocodilians. Now we have to go over the differences between the gharial and the false gharial, since these key characteristics are important when identifying the animals in zoos, though you probably won't have to in the wild due to their separated ranges. The false gharial is slightly smaller, at 5 meters in maximum length, while the gharial grows up to a maximum of 6 meters, making it one of the largest crocodilian species alive today. Most of their other differences are in their skulls, for example, the gharial has a more triangular head, while the false gharial has a more rounded head. The false gharial's mouth is broader than gharial's. The snout also broadens considerably closer to the head, which is a significant distinction between the gharial and the false gharial. The gharial and the false gharial also have different teeth. The gharial's weaker jaw, but far more abundant 106 to 110 interlocking teeth, are more suited to an exclusively piscivorous diet. The false gharial's lesser teeth of around 76 to 86 and stronger jaw allow a generalist diet of aquatic and non-aquatic prey. Finally, the huge difference between these two crocodilians is the territory and habitat they inhabit. While both are highly specialised for freshwater habitats, the false gharial spends its time in swamps, while the gharial tends to inhabit river systems. Overall, the extant members of Garvialidae are extraordinary evolutionary oddities that deserve to be protected for their elusive and fascinating evolutionary history. We are blessed to have these alpha jawline fishermen alive with us today. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you for an amazing 2023. I'm sorry I didn't upload in December. This channel will hopefully continue to grow and maybe this video will boost us to 900 subscribers if we're lucky. If you'd like to see some extra content, I'd recommend seeing my cameo in Nature's Compendium section of Paleo Rewind 2023 on the Edge Science channel. I'm extremely grateful for this opportunity and I hope all of you go and check it out. I'd also like to say a huge thank you to Goji Berry for being our first ever Patreon of 2023. Thank you very much for an amazing 2023. Here's to 2024.